Welcome to Will Mega TV. I'm your host, Will Mega. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. Today on Will Mega TV, we're going to discuss Deion Sanders and his decision to leave one university and head to the next. Yes, Deion Sanders has decided to leave HBCU Jackson State and he's headed for Colorado. Colorado University and he's making some noise but not everyone is on the same page and or in agreement with Deion Sanders. Let me first say that as a graduate of a historically black college and university, that's what HBCU means for those who may not know. I'm a graduate of Lincoln University, formerly Ashman Institute, founded in 1854 in Pennsylvania. Shout out to LU, you know, and shout out to my fellow lions out there. And so today I bring commentary from the perspective of someone who's both been a student in a PWI, predominantly white institution, and a historically black college and university. Because our perspective is just a little different. It's different because in order to look through the lens of those who are graduates, alumni of Jackson State, students of, of Jackson State, uh, faculty and staff of Jack Jackson State, the uh, members of SWAC, that's the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and the HBC community at large, we have a different perspective than those who may have not attended college or those who have gone to predominantly white institutions. And so that's the angle from which I'm giving my commentary today. Deion Sanders. Let's give some backdrop as to who he is and why I believe he actually made the right decision to move on to Colorado. Today's coach in colleges and universities are under different circumstances than college just colleges and university coaches five years ago, 10 years ago, 15, 20, 30, 40 years ago. Today's coach is not going to be like the late and great Grambling University's Eddie Robinson who hitched himself to the university and became the heart and soul in the 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 uh, face and voice and spirit of the university. Shout out to his son, who's currently the head coach at Grambling University, Eddie Jr. Eddie Robinson Jr. The one who told Dion, "Did you not swag?" It was a different time then. It was a different era then. The rules were different in college in colleges and universities at the time and the political backdrop was different during Eddie Robinson's time. So I know there's a lot of black people saying, oh man, I can't believe Dion uh, sold them out. He left after three years. Uh, how could he do that? He should have at least stayed five or maybe six or he should have stayed committed to the HBCU community. How could he leave? So I think it's important that we start with how did he get there and why? If this is one of the things that most people have not even considered. One, Dion already said, I don't need the money. I'm not doing this for the money, he said, quote, unquote, I don't chase a bag, the bag chases me. 
and as braggadocious as Deion Sanders has been, none of us could ever say that he has not backed up his braggadocious Muhammad Ali words. We can't say that about Neon, Deion. What we can say is when he talked that talk, he has walked that walk. He is a very unique individual athlete who, by the way, has always uh, shared with us that he moves on God's time, that he moved there on God's time in his, in his decisions in his athletic career as a professional athlete, as a collegiate athlete, and now as a uh, coach, that he's been moving on God's time. Let's just take a look at Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders, I gotta go to the fact sheet. I like, listen, the fact sheet. Let's just go to the fact sheet. Here's my fact sheet. Made, made a few notes here, the fact sheet, sheet because I don't wanna miss this. Deion Sanders, two Super Bowls, a World Series. I just said two Super Bowls and a World Series. Yes, for those of you who don't know, Deion Sanders was a professional athlete at the same time in two sports in the National Football League and Major League Baseball. That's unheard of. The only other person we've seen do such a thing, and there's only been one other, was Bo Jackson, but not to the level of Deion Sanders, unfortunately, because Bo got hurt. But I think they were pretty much on the same level. Two Super Bowls, a World Series, College Football Hall of Fame, NFL, Hall of Fame, college football championships, two. He's led his team to a 27 and five record since he was at Jackson State. He was able to recruit some of the best at football players out of high school. He's had the gift of both gab and the ability to relate with young black men and players to guide them right and see that they would get an education. But folks, forget that before coming to coach on a collegiate level, Dion was coaching his kids in high school. And Dion had two of his sons play for him at Jackson State. Yes, he was coaching his sons, one of which was a blue college chipper quarterback, one of which all the top schools wanted, one of which his son, uh, Shador, I think his name is, Shador, is still playing. And I'm sure, I'm sure he's going to jump into the portal and transfer to Colorado. And so that's one of the main differences now. Back in the day, College athletes weren't able to hop, skip, and jump from school to school. But now that you can, many of the players that Dion recruited would be available. I'm sure he made those contractual agreements that he would have say on who he was recruiting. And that's largely why they came after him because of his strong ability to recruit. There's some out there saying, and I hear it, Oh man, uh, you know, it's his responsibility uh, to be a father figure. He was being a father figure. Both of his sons went to the school, went to Jackson State with him. Oh, he should be a father figure to all those young black men there. As if he's not going to be a father figure to people in Colorado who are on the team. 70% across the board, 70% across the board, 70% across the board in college football are black players. And let me say this to you. Yes, it's the responsibility for a coach to be a stand-up guy. It's the responsibility for a coach to mentor his players. 
is the number one responsibility of a coach to see that their that your players are student athletes, that they're doing the best that they can in the classroom and the best that they can and what they were brought there for with their scholarships as athletes to be the best student athletes that they can be. But I'm I don't want to hear this father figure nonsense uh, from the peanut gallery anymore. You know who need to who needs to be father figures? Fathers. Why in the black community we always need someone from the outside to come be a father to our children? The person who needs to be the father figure is the person who figured out how to father and give birth to the child. I don't want to hear, oh, well, you know what the system is doing to bullshit. I call bullshit. Excuse my language. I don't normally use profanity on my show, but I'm calling BS and here's why. The system didn't pull down your pants to reproduce. System didn't pull off your drawers to... Here, the father figure, what I would prefer to hear is this, that black men who father children have a responsibility to be fathers to their children from the time that the woman conceives until your job is done. And let me tell you, as a black father, your job's never done. The aspects of your job may change, but your job will never be done. You are always going to be paying it forward. You're always going to be setting the example of manhood. But the number one responsibility of fathers are the people who actually father the children. No more excuses no more excuses no more the system needs to take care of my child no more oh well so and so went to jail stop going to damn jail stop committing crimes no more well the system if you haven't figured out by now that we live in a racist society where things aren't always going to go in your favor, when you're behind the eight ball, when uh, societal injustices exist, then you need to figure it out. Because guess what? That's not an excuse. No more excuses to be a father to your child, black man. None, I don't wanna hear it. So do away with this responsibility of Deion Sanders to be a father figure. And let me ask you, if that's what you really think, what are you saying about the coach who's coming after him? Is that black man uh, in the, uh, uh, incapable of being a positive role model, model to those players? Are all the other black coaches in the SWAC and at HBCUs incapable of being positive role models to their players? The, the whole country in sports love and loved Eddie Robinson for being just that. And again, I don't want to hear, well, Dion, uh, see, you know, he should have stayed because, you know, since he did this, he, he set the example for the other NFL players. Wrong. He wasn't the first to do that. See, someone set an example for him. His name was Doug Williams, a graduate of an HBCU who came from an uh, under the tutelage of Eddie Robinson, got drafted into the NFL for the Buccaneers, went on to play for Washington, won a Super Bowl, the first black quarterback to win a Super Bowl. And after he retired, he decided to go coach. We're at at an HBCU at Grambling. And what did he do in the SWAC? He won the SWAC championship. So Dion wasn't the first. Dion was one of many to come. Dion leaving is not the only NFL player coaching in the SWAC. 
Philadelphia's own Eddie George, great running back. You know Eddie George to play for the Titans. Eddie George is the head coach right now for Tennessee State, an HBCU. So, Eddie George can still get busy. And guess what? I think this actually sets up the great precedent of creating a network of a Deion Sanders who has shed so much light on HBCU athletics, in this case football, pushing ESPN to make sure they cover games. I hope and pray that he makes sure uh, uh, that he's sure to schedule some games uh, for Colorado to play an HBCU team. Oh, it would be. Could you play? Could you see Colorado playing Grambling <laughs> after that? After that beef, Dion had. And it's still also about bringing money. So when you have a big school and they play a smaller school, guess what they do? They agree to cut that gate. That gate is, that's major. So if you have a school like a, a, a Jackson State go play against a Penn State where there are 100,000 fans in the seats, oh, that's a nice, that's a nice take. That's a nice take for a Jackson State to be able to come back home. Dion was putting people in the seats, not just as a result of his celebrity, but as a result of his productivity. The man was winning. I didn't hear you say, why didn't, why didn't Jackson State off from the bat? But guess what? He was more giving than that. He didn't even want the bag from Jackson State. What they're not talking about is the fact that he was being paid $300,000 a year, but every year he gave them back 150 grand. Cause he said, I'm not in it for the money. I want to help the program and shed some light on to HBCUs and their athletics. So he gave back 150 a year. And they be and he made sure that they got exposure. He locked in that Under Armour contract. So you start seeing the players styling and profiling and having the best of swag in the swag, right? So you have to look at this Dion Sanders move as more than just something that is, oh, it's, it's selfish to me. Did you consider the fact that he was putting him and his family at risk? Nobody talks about the fact that as soon as he got there, while they were playing, people broke into his office, stole all his stuff. Just this past week, just this past week, do you know a dead body of his, of a, a uh, I believe it was a student, was found in the trunk on campus? His children are there too. Those rich boys. Yeah. And not that his children are any better, but my point is that he still exposed them to that when he didn't have to, is my point. He's well connected. He didn't have to. So these are some of the things I think we should take into consideration. I also think we should really understand that in today's college athletics, where some of the best players can now receive uh, contracts for their likeness and their image, the game has changed. When today's college athletes can enter into the portal at any time and transfer, it's not like yesteryear. It's not like back in the day where, uh, let's say a, a, a black coach like John Thompson from Georgetown University uh, uh, would get a long-term contract, invest in his players and make sure uh, that they would graduate. That was part of their plan to John Thompson's and the John Cheney's because players couldn't just up and run and transfer. So players stayed longer, hence the coaches stayed longer. But that's not the game today. Folks can go. They're moving and grooving all day long. All day long, players 
are looking for their best opportunity to highlight their skills. And the same thing is true for the coach. As a matter of fact, Dion mentioned, it. he says that in the coaching game, he told his players, either they're, either they're, you're moving on to greater opportunities or they're looking to move you out. There are not too many folks who are sticking around in coaching. So it's productivity or bye-bye. And so this opportunity, in my opinion, gives Dion now the network of having been able to even look at the entire swag, right? And see opportunities for uh, players to move up because he knows the talent skill, giving these players a greater opportunity. This is what you don't understand. I think some people don't understand. Listen, the when it comes to professional athletes, if you have the talent, they're going to find you. You're not hidden anymore. It, it, the, we live in a communication age where folks can, at a moment, share all your film. They can show you running that 4-4. So if you can run a 4-4 and lift 350, they're going to find you. If you're 6'7", 290, with skill and agility, they're going to find you. If you have the ability to see the floor, pack that ball, make threes, you got a shot, they're going to find you. It doesn't make a difference what school you're at. The game is not the same anymore. It's not the same. And so you don't need a Deion Sanders per se to make sure that you were found if you have pro level, level talent. Now, will you become a bit more marketable when you get greater exposure? Absolutely. What's wrong with Deion Kidding. So these are some of the things we have to take into consideration. These are some of the things um, we need to look at. Deion Sanders is already going on record uh, in support of his assistant head coach. He's already going on record in support of his equipment team, his media team, the documentary team, the things that he put together to record the successes of the program. He's going on record in support of them. He's even went so far to tell his players to please do not jump into that portal. The players who are not those superstar athletes, he said, come, come Monday, the portal's going to open and people are going to rush. He said, please call me. Sit down with me. I will sit down and meet with all of you on what I think is best for you in your career, your football career, your academic career. Please don't rush and jump into that portal. What is he saying? He knows. He knows that most of the linemen that he have, that he has just aren't big enough to play linemen in the NFL. He knows. He knows who's running at 4-4 or 4-3 or 4-5. He knows who has the skill set who can throw that ball. He knows. He's telling them, I've seen you. I've recruited you. I've had the conversations with those of you who have that skill and ability. Stay put. I'm going to leave this with you before I go. Many more are coming. Best believe that other black NFL retired players are coming. And a little birdie told me that Ray Lewis is very likely to take the head coaching job at Morehouse. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, share the love. Love your brother as you love yourself. Peace. Little Mega TV.
where we focus on seeking the truth as we highlight and discuss hip hop, history, religion, revolution, politics, relationships, and reality TV. We provide insightful, uncompromisingly direct and honest programming, interviewing quality guests from your favorite urban activists, artists, actors, athletes, cultural figures, to your controversial politicians and unusual suspects. If it's making sense or provoking thought anywhere on the globe, we investigate and provide insight, education, commentary, and access from unique voices, critical thinkers, and opinion makers you can appreciate.